In the second item, we are asked to deal with hydrostatic forces and ultimately the reaction that is caused um, by hydrostatic forces on a gate. And so the, one of the keys, of course, is going to be that the pressure is going to be a function of depth in the water and that that little funny symbol, the gamma, gamma is our unit weight of 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. Other little key features that we have to keep in track along the way is that the gate is square. It is 1.8 feet by 1.8 feet that will come into play as well. With this linear variation of pressure with depth, when we go to pull off the gate as a free body diagram, of course we have a pin at the top, AX, AY. We have the reaction at the shear pin down here at B. Uh, but the, this pressure that gets translated into a force down at depth then A is always going to be perpendicular to our surface that we're create, from which we create the free body diagram. The other part of this is that it's going to vary linearly here with depth. And that means that the effective force distribution on the gate is going to be uh, ultimately trapezoidal in nature. It's going to be acting at 30 degrees. Um, relative to something here, and since the gate is rotated at 30 degrees, it's normal to the gate, and the gate is at 30 degrees, so therefore there's a 30 degree orientation. And with a the trapezoid, then, it can be convenient to cut that into two different shapes, two different triangles, and so we have this first resultant there acting at the third point of that triangle, and then the second one acting at the centroid of that triangle, call that force number two. So really it's just now a matter of figuring out <coughs> what these uh, pressures and forces are going to turn out to be. Right? So when we go look and quantify here P1, that is going to be, well we got area of a triangle, right? So that's going to be one half of the area here that we're acting on times this pressure and so we get one half of uh, 1.8 feet squared because it's 1.8 feet long and then in out of the plane of the paper it's it's that and then this intensity right here of that pressure force is going to be given to us by this P equals gamma Z and so we are at then uh, 62.4 pounds per cubic foot, that's your gamma, times our height down, which is 3.5 minus 1.8, or 1.7 feet. And that will be equal to 171.85 uh, pounds for that one. And then for the second one, is going to be similar and so we'll have one half times 1.8 feet squared times 62.4 pounds per cubic foot and then to get to the right depth we've got 1.7 down but it's not the 3.5 because we're going to swing up a little bit so that's going to be 1 plus 1 or 1.7 plus the 1.8 and then how far down it is depth wise if you prefer over here and that's 1.8 along the hypotenuse cosine of 30 uh, degrees right and that value is approximately 3. Point, uh, what is it it's either 3.29 or 3.52 um, I don't remember what it is right now. All right, so anyways, there you go. We'll work that out. That will turn out to be a value of 329.43 pounds or thereabouts. That's the magnitudes. They're moment arms. Since they're at the third point of 1.8, that is going to be 1.6 for that one. And then the two-thirds point for the other one, that's it. 1.2 feet there, because remember this whole thing from here to here is 1.8 feet. So finally, 
to then get to what we were asked to find, which was the force at B, well, some moments about point A. Let's take counterclockwise positive, then we'll have 171.85 pounds times 0 0.6 feet plus 329.43 pounds times 1.2 feet minus then 1.8 times B set it equal to 0 and we will find that our force that we were seeking force at B is going to be equal to approximately 276 or 277 pounds and if you want to be really precise then of course that's acting downwards from the horizontal at 30 degrees. And there's your answer.